and friends, we gather here today on the 70th anniversary of the foul murder of Sergeant Mervyn Pace and his colleague Sergeant Clifford Martin. Killed in the most appalling of circumstances, killed while serving their country on the other side of the world. A sacrifice which it has become politically convenient to ignore. Murders that are now to go down what George Orwell called the memory hole, the memory hole of history. Inconvenient truth to be dropped down the memory hole. We of the Forgotten British Heroes campaign are determined to rescue Sergeant Pace and men like him from the oblivion to which their enemies would wish to consign them. Not content with killing them bodily, they wish also to kill their memory. So today, we remember that 70th anniversary and we remember it particularly because unlike most murders or unlike most deaths in war this had, has and has had no official recognition either in the form of a criminal trial of those responsible or in the form of official commemorations so I ask today Jess Turner of the uh, ex of the Royal Corps of Signals to lay our wreath in belated remembrance on this 70th anniversary of Sergeant Mervyn Pace. Not only Sergeant Pace himself, but as Sergeant Pace as an emblem of so many others of his colleagues who died in that same conflict, which while we live, will never be forgotten. Thank you, Jess. Ladies and gentlemen, friends and colleagues, uh, welcome to this event of the Forgotten British Heroes campaign held in Bristol on the 70th anniversary of one of the most heinous terrorist crimes ever committed against British targets, the murders of Sergeants Mervyn Pace and Clifford Martin in Tanya, Palestine, 70 years ago today as part of the forgotten history of Zionist terror against this country. We're down in Bristol because earlier on today uh, we laid a wreath at the tomb which commemorates Sergeant Mervyn Pace in the Church of St Mary Magdalene Stoke Bishop. And we're now down here after uh, a slight uh, rearrangement of things uh, here at a central Bristol location. We've once again experienced today um, one arm of the conspiracy of silence. There's always been a, a respectable arm of treason in this country and, uh, and a, a non-respectable arm. Uh, the respectable arm uses the, the law and the police, the non-respectable arm uses the Antifa and the mob. But, and they, they seek a pincer movement to deny any form of uh, free political discussion or free historical discussion in this country just as they do throughout Europe. That is Britain in the 21st century, that is Europe in the 21st century, that is for the time being the fate of the West. But today we've, um, we've evaded those restrictions. We've held a successful wreath laying and we're now going to hold a successful meeting 
to discuss the, some of the issues surrounding those events of 70 years ago, the both the historical context of those events and the reasons why those events are so relevant for today's Britain in 2017. And as, uh, as your first speaker today, I want you to welcome uh, a good friend of ours who's been campaigning on these related issues of historical truth and national renaissance ever since the early 1970s, both in this country and across Europe. Please welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Richard Edmonds. Uh, thank you, Peter, for those words. Uh, thank you, friends, uh, for attending this vital meeting. And thanks to the organisers who have managed to overcome one or two little hiccups that have been put our, in our way. And yet, in spite of the hiccups, um, this meeting is taking place and we are making a film here. And congratulations and thanks to all those who have contributed um, to today, um, both those who are here and those who, for various reasons, aren't here. Those who've made the meeting and those who conceived of this whole program. I include everybody in the thanks. Um, we, the supporters of the campaign to remember and to honour forgotten British heroes, we have made public the facts of the vicious campaign of terrorism, bombings and murders, the campaign perpetrated by Jewish terrorists against British soldiers and against British officials, um, the campaign perpetrated by Jewish terrorists as part of the Zionist campaign to drive the British out of the mandate in Palestine and to set up the Jewish state of Israel. Um, the Second World War was still raging when Jewish terrorists murdered the British government's representative, the British government's political representative in the Middle East. Um, that was the assassination by Jewish terrorists of Lord Moyne in Cairo in November 1944. The, the Second World War had, had, had been raging and this Jewish Zionist campaign with the murder of, uh, of Lord Moyne was the beginning of a years long, years in the plural, years long campaign of Jewish terrorism, of murder, assassination, kidnappings and bomb outrages. Hundreds of British soldiers and officials, British policemen and those in their care and protection fell victim to this Jewish campaign of terrorism. Victims both in Palestine and here in the United Kingdom. And we are here today in Bristol to remember the young British soldier, the British Army conscript, the 20-year-old Sergeant Mervyn Pace, a son of this city who was kidnapped by Jewish terrorists together with his fellow conscript, Sergeant Clifford Martin. They were kidnapped, kept in a dungeon for weeks and then strangled and their corpses hung in a eucalyptus grove and booby trapped to injure their mates when they took them down the fate of young British soldiers. The Second World War had just ended when these vicious attacks were taking place. British soldiers had fought six long years to defeat Adolf Hitler. The Adolf Hitler who allegedly murdered six million Jews. And then, and then came what can only be described as the Jewish stab in the back for those British soldiers. 
the American Jewish Hollywood film producer, Ben Hecht, cheered on the terrorists. Ben Hecht said, went public and said, I have a holiday in my heart every time a British soldier is killed. Now, at this meeting, we have on sale a copy of Heritage and Destiny, which gives the details of this bloody and vicious campaign. Um, this issue of Heritage and Destiny is on sale at this meeting now. Um, hundreds of British soldiers, officials, police officers, and those in their care fell victim to this Jewish terrorist campaign, including the then Home, the then Foreign Secretary, Ernest Bevin, was a target for this terrorism. A, a parcel bomb was posted to him personally. Unfortunately, luckily, an official recognised the bomb for what it was, investigated it, and they, de they de deactivated um, the explosive desire device inside. Under these circumstances, and knowing the facts. No decent British person would describe themselves as a friend of Israel. However, we live in very indecent times and Israel has many friends at the very top of British society. Recently, the Prime Minister, Theresa May, made a speech commemorating the founding of the State of Israel. And this is the words that she said. And I'm going to quote what she said. This is Theresa May, Britain's Prime Minister. Today, she said, today we celebrate the founding of the State of Israel. She continued, we pay our respects to those who fought so hard to establish the state of Israel. She continued, we remember the sacrifice of those who fought to establish the state of Israel. End of quote. She is lauding and praising the terrorist murderers of our soldiers. Now, we know that the State of Israel was founded in the blood of hundreds of British soldiers who were murdered by Jewish terrorists, both in Britain and in the, and in the Middle East, including, and we have particularly come to Bristol today to pay our respects to, to the 20-year-old British Army conscript, Sergeant Mervyn Pace, who together with his fellow conscript and fellow mate, uh, Sergeant um, Clifford Martin, were kidnapped by Jewish terrorists, kidnapped, kept in a dungeon for weeks, strangled, and then their corpses, their booby-trapped corpses, uh, put on a, in a eucalyptus grove to, to, to seriously injure their mates when they were taken down. Uh, hundreds of British soldiers were murdered in that Zionist terrorist campaign to drive the British out of Palestine um, in order to set up the Zionist Jewish state of Israel. Um, I, was, I made the point that no decent British person would describe themselves as a friend of Israel. And yet, if you look up on the internet, you can see shamelessly the names of dozens of the conservative friends of Israel and you will see there amongst the conservative party friends of Israel you will see there the name of the current Prime Minister Mrs Theresa May you will see there the name of the former Prime Minister David Cameron you will see there the name of the parliamentary uh, chairman of the Conservative Friends of Israel, Sir Eric Pickles, and you will see there the name of the former uh, parliamentary chairman
of the Conservative Friends of Israel, James Arbuthnot. Um, according to the Conservative, according to um, the Sunday Telegraph journalist Peter O'Born, some 80% of Tory MPs call themselves Friends of Israel, the state that was founded in the blood of British soldiers. If you look up on the internet the names of the Friends, the Labour Party Friends of Israel, you will see all the names there that you'll expect to see. And top of the list, the former Prime Minister, former leader of the Labour Party, Tony Blair. Labour Party friend of Israel, number one. Look up the Liberal Democrat friends of Israel and the UKIP friends of Israel and you'll find all the names that you'd expect to see there. But there is one name you won't find in the list of Labour friends of Israel and that is the name of the leader of Her Majesty's official opposition in the House of Commons. You won't see the name of Jeremy Corbyn listed as a friend of Israel. One can only say, friends, those Chinese were very wise when they recommended that one lives in interesting times, eh? Um, so, on sale at this meeting is this, uh, this issue of Heritage and Destiny, which gives you the background facts to this, I will only conclude here by saying that I'm sure you all agree with me and I'm sure that most people who will be viewing this film will agree with me when I say that we look forward to the day when honour, truth and justice returns to our Britain. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, Richard. Well, in stark contrast to the treacherous politicians of Lib Lab Con, and sadly, although the jury is still out on UKIP, some treacherous politicians in UKIP too, uh, in stark contrast to them, uh, there have been people uh, within the patriotic political tradition who have resisted all temptation to trim on these issues, have bravely resisted all temptation to sell out the truth on these issues. And Richard Edmonds is foremost among those. Oh, Thank right. you very much, Richard. <laughs>